So in the last video, we talked about context and dispatches. And in this video, I want to go over what jobs are, how to handle them, and also how to use timeouts in Kotlin coroutines. So let's get started immediately by creating a suspend function. So let's do private suspend function, and we will call this network request. And inside here, we are going to create a job that waits to be completed before continuing. So much like run blocking, this job will display everything that's inside the coroutine and wait for it to finish before moving on with the list of statements that the program has to execute. So to create our job, all we have to do is type in a value and it can be any name, but we're just going to call it job. And we're going to then call global scope dot launch. And inside this coroutine, we are going to log that we are making a network request. So making net work request. And then right below that, we are going to create a for loop and it's going to be for I in one, two, five. We want to delay it 1000 milliseconds and we want to create another log that says waiting and interpolate the I so we can tell for how many seconds we were waiting. Now, if we run it like this, you'll see that the program will terminate immediately just the same way if we were to dispatch a coroutine on globalscope.launch, we need the program to stay alive for it to work. But with jobs, all you have to do is go to the bottom and type in job.join. And this join keyword essentially just asks for this job to complete before moving on with the program. And then we can write a log right below and say network request successful. And let's go ahead to our main function and we are going to turn this into a run blocking block here. So inside here, we can easily add our suspend functions. And the first thing we will add is our network request. And let's go ahead and click on play. Perfect. So it's making a network request. Now it's going to wait for five seconds. And at the end, it will say the network request was successful. So to sum it up, a job essentially just controls the lifecycle of the coroutine. And now let me show you also how to cancel a job in case you want this to stop at around three seconds because you just don't want it to do anything anymore. Well, to do this first, we are going to get rid of the job.join and then we have to add a delay and we are going to write 2000 milliseconds. And then we are going to go to the bottom and write job dot cancel and join. The join part is necessary so the program will continue executing without letting it terminate prematurely. So we can actually wait for this to compute before closing it. Otherwise, if you run Android Studio, job dot cancel should be enough because you are running on a continuous thread that does not terminate as long as the life cycle is going. And usually in Android Studio, if your application closes, that will mark the end of your application. So this is not really that necessary in Android Studio. But for IntelliJ, you need to include it because the program will terminate prematurely. So we have included job.cancel and join. And let's change this log to network request cancelled. Now after 2000 milliseconds, you should see that this coroutine will be cancelled. So let's go ahead and click on play. So it's making the network request and it says waiting one, waiting two, and then it got the request to cancel it. So it said network request canceled and it exited the program. Now, another thing to show you is that you can easily create multiple jobs for this. And I'm just gonna copy what I created in my previous example. So now we have exactly the same job, except I wrote in job two and job two, and I also named this value job two. So down here, you can just write in job two dot join and it will wait for both of these to complete before moving on to the next log statement. And let's click play. So as you can see here, it's making two network requests at the exact same time. And at the end of these two network requests, it will say that the network request was successful. And it actually waits for both of them to complete before moving on to this log statement. So make sure that they both work or you might have to wait quite a bit. For example, pretend we go to our job two where we have a delay of 500 milliseconds. Now let's pretend we actually turn that to something ridiculously long, such as 50 seconds, and we click on play. You'll see that even though it finished the first job, it will still wait quite a bit for the second job to complete before you can continue on with the program. And you can see right here that job two is still making the network request and it has a 50,000 millisecond delay, which means we have to wait 50 seconds before it makes it through the first loop. So as you can see, after 50 seconds, we have our first log that says waiting one. Now we just have to wait for that four more times. And you can see this actually will take a long time before we get the result that the network request was successful. So let's go ahead and click on stop so we don't have to wait for that. And with that being said, I'm going to introduce a new element called the timeout. So 
let's actually just get rid of value job too because it kind of clutters the workspace here. And we're just going to resume with value job one. And this time we are going to add the with timeout keyword. So we will type in with timeouts. It will tell us how many milliseconds do you want to wait before we create a timeout. We will say 5,000 milliseconds and it will create a block where we can insert this over here. So we'll just insert this inside the with timeout. And once we insert it, we should also change this to 10,000 milliseconds. So it will take an absurd amount of time to print this waiting log. But now you will see that once it has reached 5,000 milliseconds, this program will throw an exception. And that is why we need to surround this by try and catch so we can actually handle the exception and tell the program what to do when we have this exception. So we'll write catch and since we already know what the exception is, it's going to be a timeout cancellation exception. We can just handle it in here and we can write log and we are going to write our log message, which is just the E. And logging it here will give us the exact same error we would have received without the try block. And actually before we run this, it's very important we take this log down here that says the network request was successful and add it right under the job.join because if we add it down here, it will say the network request was successful regardless of what happens in the try block. So we just want it to be successful if this code actually executed. So let's go ahead and click on play and see what happens. So it's making the network request, which will take 10,000 milliseconds. So we patiently wait for that to happen. And then we will get this exception that says timed out waiting for 5,000 milliseconds. And that's where you would usually add some other codes to be executed or a finally block or whatever you prefer. And let's just remove this catch and this try block as well, because I want to show you another function that has to do with timeout. And this is with timeout or null. And this is going to be spelt like that. So what happens here is it will try to execute this block. And if there's a timeout, it will just evaluate this entire statement to null. So if we go ahead and click on play, you'll see that it's making a network request, but except this time we did not get any exception. That is because it decided to nullify this entire block. And in that case, we had nothing returned, which means the program just read it as, ah, nothing happened and just exited the program as it usually would. Now, the last thing I want to show you in this video is how to solve a few bugs that you will most definitely encounter. And this has to do with the cancellation of a job. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this part here. And instead, I am going to copy and paste in some code from the Kotlin coroutine documentation. So I'll just copy and paste it directly inside here. And we can just remove this run blocking from the function main and change this to a normal function since we have decided to include the run blocking block inside the function. But essentially what we have here is we have a value of start time, which takes our current time. Whenever the program decided to make this request, it will take the timestamp and then it decides to create a job on dispatches.default. And then we create another variable that says next print time, which is equivalent to the start time. Then we initialize a variable of I with the value of zero and we create this while loop. And this while loop was just created to waste some CPU and make some fake computations. But as long as this is true, it will print a message every 500 milliseconds and it will say job I'm sleeping and it will increment I by one. So in theory, you should have five print statements that say I'm sleeping. But then down here, we decided to add a delay of 1300 milliseconds. And this print line statement will be triggered that says I'm tired of waiting and it will try to cancel the coroutine. Then you'll see that once it has been quit, it will say now I can quit and the program will terminate. Now, let me just run and play this program so you can see exactly which problem we will encounter when running this code. Perfect, so now I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, I'm tired of waiting, but wait, the program is still running and saying I'm sleeping. So it did not successfully cancel the job when we wanted it to. And you can see it printed an additional two I am sleeping logs and then it said now I can quit. So that's quite buggy and you wouldn't really want something like that in a real application. So the reason this happened is because this while loop was trying to compute something and it did not have time to check the cancel request. And because of that, it continued printing out additional statements that we did not want it to. It just failed to find an opportunity to actually receive this cancel request. Now, let me show you how to get around this. Instead of having while I is less than five, all you need to do is call is active. And this actually checks whether there is a cancellation request or not. So instead of looping one more time, it will check each single time whether it has been canceled or not. And if it has not been canceled, it will continue to loop. But if it has been canceled, it will stop exactly where you want it to 
and the program will finish accordingly. So let's go ahead and click on play so you can see the program finish exactly where we want it to finish. So there we go, we had this print three times and after 1300 milliseconds, we had the statement I'm tired of waiting be printed and finally the quit statement so the program could exit. And that's perfect, that means we finally found a way to control our cancellation. And with that being said, I believe those were the very basics I wanted to show you on how jobs work in Kotlin coroutines. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use async and await. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.